by, by Barbara and by Jenny, and then we then, then we can take a coffee break, and then we have a, a, a discussion for the rest of the day. And um, so the first presentation will be by uh, Barbara about um, linear functions and nuclear structure. So I will uh, review some co concepts related to the linear function, and uh, in particular, I will start uh, about the general introduction. Then uh, uh, I will review a little bit the concept that were, has been introduced already by Mark this morning, and then I will introduce uh, a convenient representation for this linear distribution in terms of the multiple decomposition, which allow us to introduce uh, some phase space uh, transverse modes. And then I will uh, discuss the relation between orbital angular momentum and linear distribution, and I will show some examples in electron controller. So, as it was uh, discussed this morning, we can uh, take the definition of linear uh, uh, distribution from quantum mechanics. And in quantum mechanics, uh, you can have this. Uh, it doesn't work, I don't see. Yeah. Laser point, I think, doesn't work. Ah, I see. You give me one more stick. It's, it's too modern. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring this stick. <laughs> 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 we have such a screen in our department. I want to avoid the stick because it's so. So, then you can introduce uh, uh, this definition in terms of the wave function of your quantum mechanical system. You can have the definition taking the wave function in the position space or equivalently using the, the representation in the momentum space. <laughs> And already for the definition, you see that this Wigner uh, function, they contain the same information that you have from the uh, uh, Schrodinger function, and you can reformulate your, the quantum mechanical description of your system in, the, in terms of this object. In particular, you can also derive some evolution equation, which tells you how this Wigner distribution evolves in the uh, phase space. So when you, you integrate the Wigner function over the momentum, then you recover the position space density in terms of the square of the wave function in analogies. If you take the integral over the, the position, you get the momentum space density. But the nice feature of this uh, Wigner function is that uh, you can uh, calculate the expectation value of the operator just using the same uh, expression as you have uh, uh, with the phase space that uses statistical mechanics. Then you take the average over the full phase space of your operator weighted with the Wigner function in the phase space. So, however, there is a difference with respect to the uh, phase space uh, density that you have uh, in statistical mechanics because uh, in the case of a quantum mechanical system, uh, you have uh, the Heisenberg asserted relation which tells you that uh, you cannot uh, uh, give a probabilistic interpretation for your system, you cannot determine it with the precision you want, the position and the momentum of your system at the same time. And then uh, evidence of this, uh, uh, of this problem is that this uh, distribution, they are not positive definites. And typically, they can get that negative value over a volume in the phase space of the dimension of each bar. So then you cannot have a strictly probabilistic interpretation and you speak about the quasi probability. And in particular, you can recover the classical density only when H is going to zero. Sorry to stop you. I was thinking of this and remember, for instance, when Marcus Steele was introduced, introduced to a notion of R and G. So they have way conjugate to different variables. Yes. So it means that so how, 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 how this Heisenberg and certain principle then is uh, making a difference here? Okay, this is that uh, if you take uh, our the definition, definition, they are not for a conjugate variable. Ah, so, so. No, that's, so those those are for a conjugate. They are not, they well, you have like, you make it three dimensional, you have X can use with piece of Y. That's what you want so they do not commute because one is the average momentum, then the sum of the initial and final momentum, and then the other variable is 
the, actually, sorry, one is the momentum transfer, Kf minus Ki, and the other one is the average position. Uh, Ri, initial plus R final. And you take the commutator, they do not commute. So they are subject to the isometric uh, uncertainty. Barbara, further to this point, if you go back to the side, in, in your formula for the quantum average, uh, you have an operator that depends on R and K. So here, R and K are just C numbers. I mean, it's not like K is the, the, the momentum operator and the coordinate representations would be ID, ID by the so R. So this number. is the representation for the operator in terms of your uh, the, the variable. Okay, so what so if I have an operator that's composed, say, of the position and momentum operator and they don't commute? And then uh, if I convert it to this form, it seems um, they, they commute because it's an it becomes an ordinary function of R and K. I mean, if I have, say, I start from some operator which is, say, a com uh, made up of the position operator and the coordinate operator in some definite order. Okay. It's like so I have, like have, have with angular action. momentum or so. Yeah, and then you have the order X on P yeah. in a certain way. Yeah, and then what the right are the What? In order to make since the correlation function is defined to be a mission, this Jerry points so out, you would get automatically the permission, uh, the hermitized version of your two operators. So I see you try them in a way there. So yeah. RK would be, so it's R times uh, K, okay. and RK plus KR. Okay, okay. It's what is called the right description no when you go right. from. Uh, okay, no problem. Okay, so we want to generalize this definition for in quantum field theory, then uh, we can start now what, what, uh, from this uh, quark because the operator where now you have uh, your quark field, then you insert the Dirac matrix that in general project uh, when you are at least two project a different polarization of the quark, and then to make the object again invariant introduce a new symbol. This is a case, is this, in this case is the full momentum and R is the uh, three, uh, the, the coordinate in T, so then we take uh, this operator, the fixed light from time, which corresponds to integrate over the minus component for the momentum. And then uh, following uh, the first uh, word by G, uh, the list in Feng, you can uh, define a bigger distribution taking uh, the matrix element of this operator on the two states which are calculated in the right frame, which are taken in the right frame. Then you make a translation from R to zero, and then you get this factor. Integrating over delta, you get the three-dimensional Fourier transform of this matrix element, which is a definition of the Wigner distribution in six dimensions. You have three dimensions in the coordinate, three dimensions in the momentum. But as it was discussed this morning from Matthias, if you take the matrix element in the bright frame, you cannot have a quasi probabilistic interpretation of this object. And then what we did, we introduced a matrix element in the Drelian frame. Drelian frame means that you have zero longitudinal momentum transfers, and then you have a finite delta plus, then a delta plus momentum transfers, and again, by shifting the operator in zero, now you have this two dimensional Fourier transform, which gives you a linear distribution in two. Uh, uh, in two components for the coordinate space and in three dimensions for the momentum space. Robert, sorry, but since you introduced this in a more general context, say, um, in your first line now, uh, psi bar and psi are second quantized fields. Yes. So the, uh, this um, I mean, the, this product is presumably singular when you, uh, when you go on, on the light cone. Yes. Right? And you, you integrate over, uh, over all Z. Yeah. So, how do you handle this light cone um, yes, diversions in a, in a general context? You can regularize as it was what it was explained this morning. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that you can do perturbatively, but say yes. um, non perturbatively, is, is this say defined up to some singular function or? or, or uh, um, no, this is just a definition that we have to regularize. Yeah. Okay, and it's the ordinary operator product, not the T product or, or no. the ordinary yeah. product. 
So then with this definition, you also can recognize here the definition of the generalized transform into independent part of distribution, which were given today by Mark. And then indeed the, the Wigner distribution defined with the matrix element and radial frame are just Fourier transform of the G -Kilinus. So, okay then. So repeat a little bit what my CTS was saying today. We are taking delta plus equal to zero. Then it means that we, we are not sensitive to the longitudinal Lorentz contraction. And then delta plus equal to zero is equivalent to integrating the minus component in R. That means that this is why we have now five dimensional distribution and not six dimensional as in the case of the C. We have a finite trans momentum uh, transfer which means that initial and final states are related by transverse boost, but uh, transverse boost, boost are just kinematical transformation. And then we do not have transverse Lorentz contraction, and in particular, the advantage to, to have now uh, to work in this frame delta plus equal to zero is that we are looking at the same pattern configuration in the initial and final protostase. We, have, uh, we do not have a contribution of like this one, where you have a different, where you have overlap of uh, uh, photo components with different number of parts in initial and final states, but you have only this kind of configuration, the same number of parts. This is because this kind of transformation, this uh, transverse boost, do not involve interaction. Then you do not change, you do not evolve uh, dynamically your system going from the initial to the final states. And this one allows you to give this positive probabilistic interpretation. Otherwise, if you have contribution like this one where you, that you will get when delta plus is different from zero, you cannot have a quasi probabilistic interpretation. This is what also Matthias was explaining this morning. So then it's essential that we are looking at the frame delta plus equal to zero, which is equivalent to psi equal to zero. Stupid question. Yeah. Is it really a frame or is it a kinematical restriction? Uh, what is uh, this delta plus equals zero? It's a frame. So there is a frame in which each GPD has psi equals zero. Ah, okay. Now Why is this related to psi equal to zero? Because no one is equal delta plus equal to zero. I think that's enough. Psi equal to zero. Equals psi is a delta plus divided by the plus. Yeah. Uh, all right. Then this yeah. So it's not a single frame, it's a class of frames. Yes, it's very yeah. under long It needs space like photons. Space like photons, yeah. spatial vectors bigger than the time components, you can choose your z axis in such a way that uh, delta plus is zero. It's in component. It's a whole class of frames. <coughs> it can be the rest frame, it can be. Uh, the main thing is that delta has only per component. Yeah. No, it has a minus component. A minus plus component. component. But it can doesn't have a plus component. So that uh, in this way you get your five dimensional picture, then uh, they depend now on this variable. X is the usual longitudinal momentum fraction, and the third is uh, the position in the transverse plane of the core with respect to the center of momentum of the movement, and then KPEP, which is the transverse momentum of, of the core. And then, uh, as it was uh, explained, the status GTMDs are just uh, the matter function because uh, by taking some particular projection, you can get all the other distribution that we know. In particular, if you take now delta equal to zero, the three vector equal to zero, you recover the TMD. On the other side, if you integrate over k pair, you have the GPD. And then, both in the GPD, they have the common limit of the pattern distribution function using this link. So on the other side, in the uh, coordinate space, the GTMDs are related to linear distribution, that we know that from the GPD, you have the spin density, which are given now in terms of the longitudinal momentum fraction and the, the position in the transverse space. So you can complete this picture by taking now the first moment in X of each distribution, then from a bilocal core operator, you have a local operator which gives you the form factor of the part distribution that you have 
in the upper plane of the box. Then in particular, from the GPD, we get the form factor and then by Fourier transform the transverse of the instance. So this is the complete picture that we can have from the GTD. And then a convenient way to calculate this object is to use the language of life from wave function. So you can derive a representation in terms of overlap of life from wave function. And the life from wave function are defined by taking the Fock expansion of the nucleon at a fixed light from time. Then in general, you can have three quark, three quarks plus quark and three quark, three quarks plus one gluon. And the coefficient of this uh, Fock expansion are the light from wave function, which, which represents the probability amplitude to find a given pattern to be configuration in the nucleon. They have some nice property, in particular they are invariant, invariant under boost, that are independent on the momentum of the nucleon, and indeed they depend only on the intrinsic coordinate, which uh, mm -hmm. verify this uh, momentum, linear momentum conservation. And in addition, they are also eigenstates of the uh, orbital angular momentum defined in this gauge, in the A plus equal to zero gauge. Then you can get the delicity of the nucleon as the sum of the delicity of the individual part plus the orbital angular momentum, which is uh, the eigenvalue of your, uh, of your electron wave function. So then uh, if we just focus on the three quark components, we can derive a general representation for the GTMDs in terms of overlap of light from the function for the final and the initial moving states. And then this correlator is calculated by taking just what is called the, um, do you say, the interaction picture when you have the, just interacting the probe with uh, an individual quark. And this is represented by this, uh, by this operator where you have the gamma matrices which gives a twist to the projection on the different spin of the quark. And then here you have just some, uh, the measure of uh, your uh, integral, which uh, contain the conservation of the linear momentum. So this is general, is model independent, and then to get some results, and now we introduce a particular simple model for the three quark electron the function. And in particular, we used, uh, we started with uh, a wave function in the momentum space defined in the instant form. And this one is just an ansatz for uh, uh, this functional form is just an, an ansatz which was, uh, is given in terms of the free energy of the three quarks and then two parameter, beta and gamma, and the normalization constant. With the parameter which were fitted originally in the work batch room, so maybe some years ago, to fit the anomalous magnetic moment of the model. And in particular, the power here was also a constraint to reproduce the high Q square behavior of the form factor. High Q square, I mean, 5, 6 GV to the work model calculation. So, from this wave function, which is in the rest frame of the nucleon, we can uh, apply a boost to the, uh, uh, to the light, to the light front, the light front boost to get the light from the function. And these boosts are given in terms of uh, these matrices, which are rotation matrices in the spin space. They transform the nuclear spin in the rest frame in the canonical nuclear spin, a uh, nuclear spinner, which gives uh, the representation of the instant form, to the light from spin. So they are rotation matrices <laughs> in, a, in a plane, in the plane of uh, a, a, around the direction which is perpendicular to Kepler and Z. And in particular, when we make the Fock expansion in terms of light from wave function, we are expanding on Fock states which are free particles. And then in the case of free quarks, this rotation becomes very simple and they become what are called the nearest rotation. So they involve, when you boost the instant uh, form spinner to the light cone, when the k-perp is different from zero, you have contribution from a non-diagonal matrix element, then from one state, spin one alpha, you can have spin flip, that means that 
This depends on the fish introduce, the depends on the fish in the boost, introduce some orbital angular component, orbital angular momentum component in the light conversion machine. Then we can start with a wave function like this one, with orbital angular momentum equal to zero, and by boosting in the infinite momentum frame, you get something which is orbital angular momentum equal to zero. So then, in particular, for the spin structure, spin as a spin structure of the wave function, we use the SUC symmetry. In this model, so was fitted in the beginning just for the form factor, and then was used to get prediction for GPT, TMD, azimuth asymmetries, and in particular, in the last year, for the degree of distribution. And typically, even if it's a simplified model, in particular, when we work with Peter, we calculate some observable related to semi inclusive analysis scattering, and we found a reasonable description with, uh, within uh, the big uh, error bar of the available experimental data. And this one just special, uh, specializes in the valence region because we have just a three quarter contribution. So then uh, the question is. Uh, uh, what can be learned also in general from the linear distribution. So if we work uh, at least two, the gamma structure is given by this uh, uh, operator, which corresponds to have uh, unpolarized, longitudinal polarized, transfer polarized quark. Then in addition, we can consider different uh, polarization for the nucleon. And then in addition, when we introduce uh, the gauge link contribution, we can uh, um, we can have T even and T out of the GTMD, the distribution. So, counting all the possibility, in general, you have at least two 16 complex GTMDs, and when you make the Fourier transform, they become 32 real Wigner distribution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you introduce the gauge link, is that um, just philosophically, is that part of your Fox space decomposition, no. or is it? Is it? Uh, it's adjusted. It's it's interactions that are. It's interaction. Yeah. Um, so it includes only like polarization states of the ones yes. that do not project on on, on, on physical quanta. Um, so this is it just come from the Wilson line. It's not yeah. part of the wave function of the light conversion machine. Yeah. Okay. Even even the the, the transfer. But so the thing at infinity, that's a, that's a separate thing. That okay, so. Yeah, yeah, but that's the only thing that remains once you collect the gauge links. Yeah. So, yeah. okay. So, specifically for the linear function, I did, okay, we made a calculation for the series of all models with one good exchange approximation. And then exactly as Matthias uh, was saying, and this one, you got the contribution for infinity. So you can also define what are called augmented electron wave function, and then you can incorporate the phase which comes from the Wilson line inside the definition of the, yeah. of the wave function. And then you change the scale, of course, and you have to reshuffle between your electron wave function constituents yeah. and your and your and your previous yeah. uh, line. Yes. So yes. And then uh, to make like, things a little bit more simple, so I will consider function where we integrate over x and then I will look at objects just in four dimension, in terms of k perp and b perp. So then what uh, I'm describing now is model independent. This is just a general structure that you can, uh, 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 you can recognize in your function in terms of phase space transfer modes. We have a four-dimensional quantity. Then uh, to get the convenient parametrization, what we did, uh, we went in the coordinate space in the transverse plane, and then we have this circle at fixed value of B perp. At each point on this circle, you can draw now what is uh, the, uh, the distribution in the K perp sp uh, space. But in general, when you look at this point, for example, it means that you are looking at uh, a quark at this di distance from the center of momentum, and then with this different component of kx and ky. And then we introduce now a multiple decomposition of this function, looking at the possible multiples, both in the k and the b space. And then 
take into account the property of parity in time reversal, you can, uh, you can uh, see what are, what, what are the possible multiples depending on the different polarization of the quark in the evening. So, and then in addition, we separate in contribution which are T even, where you do not have the specific contribution from the Wilson line, and T out, where it's essential to have a contribution from the Wilson line. So this one is, a, you can make this, uh, uh, this study in a model independent way, then you can recognize the depending on the different polarization, you can have this different multiple structure. And uh, for each, for considering all the possible polarization, what you are looking are the correlation between the spin and the orbital momentum of the quark and of the nucleon. And this one depends on the polarization that you are considering, for example, this morning, Mark was discussing unpolarized quark in longitudinal polarized nucleon, which gives you the correlation between the spin of the nucleon and the orbital momentum of the quark, vice versa for longitudinal polarized quark and unpolarized nucleon, you have the other correlation between the spin and the orbital momentum of the nucleon. And looking at it, all the possible uh, uh, polarization of the quark and nucleon, you can have all the different kind of uh, uh, spin orbit correlation. Uh, spin orbit correlation. I will discuss uh, the most simple case, unpolarized quark, unpolarized nucleon, and then uh, I will discuss also the case of uh, unpolarized quark longitudinal polarized nucleon, which is related to the orbital and the momentum. And then I will show, for example, just this uh, quantity. But if you see, this is uh, the density that you get for specific polarization of the nucleon and the quark. And this quantity gives you the deformation induced by the polarization of the nucleon with respect to the case of to the unpolarized case. And if you want really the quasi density, you have to take the sum of this one and this one. I will just show the deformation induced by the polarization, what is called raw energy. So then, okay, I. Okay. Can I ask a question? In, in uh, light form quantization, which is basically the wave functions, you, uh, your fields have good, bad components or, or uh, canonically yes. independent and, and dependent ones. Now, it seems to me when you consider all these correlations, that you definitely involve the bad components no. as well as precise. Yeah. Um, is that enough? Hmm? Really? Is that enough? Yeah. Um, so, because. Uh, I mean, what you. Form, what you can form from the, good, from the good components alone is not that much. It's basically the, the, the two. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you can have transverse components, but I, I yeah, think but you have the, here objects which depend also on the curve. Yeah. So then this one and this is the information. The paper gives you the information about the orbit. I mean, you have spin orbit correlation, yes. so, so uh, the, the <coughs> in a in relativistic, I mean, that if say it involves the spin, so um, <coughs> but if you just look at the light from the trash, yeah. or the, or the three quark, we have different orbital momentum information. Also, for the sieves, it's the same, we have yeah. connecting state with different orbital momentum, and we have information about the orbital. Just to go back a little bit to the beginning, you start with the bigger distributions, you have a psi bar and gamma plus and psi bar. Yeah. Gamma plus ensures yeah. everything is good. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In this gamma, which was the okay, gamma okay, definition, okay. That, yeah, that, I just that, take that, the that, crystal. Okay. So then, uh, this post which I, I'm showing now, are obtained in the quark model, which I presented before, but uh, the general feature are just model independent. We would expect this kind of, uh, of picture in any model, what changes just the, in the density, I mean, uh, the value of this, uh, actually, light uh, region in this positive contribution, this one means a negative contribution, in this picture, they are even normalized to one, so to the value of the center, just to make more visible. And depending on the model, you change, I mean, the scale of the color. 
but the structure in terms of monopoles, dipoles, this is not in independent. They just come from the decomposition, which is, is given by time reversal, parity invariance, which are presented in the beginning. So this is in the case of unpolarized quark and unpolarized proton. Uh, two are the natural. So because uh, uh, you have to tell me the assumption. So unpolarized quark and unpolarized proton. And this one in the T even case. <laughs> and you have a monopole in the coordinate <coughs> momentum space to integrate over. This is a this circle is our circle fixed the curve. And these are, are the distribution in the moment of space. If you integrate over K curve, you get the GPD, and you have just a monopole, what's called the one polarizing or polarizing nucleon, the HGPD. The integral over the curve gives you the TMD F1, which is just a monopole structure in the, in the, in the moment of space. In this case, even if you have a monopole in K in the curve, you don't see you see something which is not a monopole, but is elongated in this direction. So in, in general, it's elongated in the direction which is perpendicular to the B vector. Here is the B vector, here is the B vector, and then you see this, uh, the distribution in the momentum space is elongated in the direction which is perpendicular to the B vector. So that it means that you have uh, a tendency of your quark to make a polar motion in the momentum space, which is favorable with respect to the radial motion. The quasi probability, because you cannot strictly speak about the probability to have a radial motion in this direction, is less favorable with respect to the motion in the polar direction. However, you have a bottom-up symmetry, then polar motion in this direction has the same quasi probability as polar motion in the other direction. Then at the end, if you average over the full phase space, you do not have net orbital reality. So this is what uh, you get when you introduce the effect of, of uh, the final state interaction. And this one, when you integrate over k pair will be pair is equal to zero, then you do not have anything anal analog in the case of GPD and TMD. So in this case, you have some dipole structure, which is uh, in the direction of the vector be pair. Then it means that you have uh, a radial flow of your quark in the direction which is parallel to the curve. And this radial flow is just an effect of the initial or final state interaction, an effect of the Wilson line, because uh, you have uh, now quark which has the tendency to flow in this direction and to escape from the movement. And this is just an effect due to final or initial state interaction, is, and it is not an intrinsic property of your movement, otherwise, you will not have. Uh, a stable object. So then uh, you can also. Can, 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 can I ask a question? Yeah. I mean, the Wilson line we have in the object. And we can just talk about this object for the nuclear alone. At least that's what we do. So we don't have to embed it in the process. So now, how does this picture of yeah. outward going flow? Uh, Connect basically this confinement. But this is not a, a gluon which is intrinsic, it's not part of your, uh, your nucleus state, it's not a, a constituent gluon. It's something that you always have to exchange. Uh, you have an exchange of uh, a gluon between the rapid quark and the spectator quark. And this exchange of gluon is due to some interaction which is not uh, inside the dynamics of your quark. Like in scattering theory, you have two types of wave functions, like in space and out space, depending on the boundary condition. And the, uh, the, norm, the standard ones you're referring to are the ones where the in space, where the, the gauge ring comes from minus infinity and the interactions uh, from minus infinity to, to zero. But then, uh, yes. when you calculate the transition rate, then you take the, the out state wave function that has the gauge ring from, from zero to, to plus infinity. Uh, then, okay. you, then you can yeah. still maintain, I mean, within your context that everything is in the wave function and, uh, and you get the sign uh, phase, uh, phase change. If you incorporate this, uh, if you want to incorporate the wave function. The, if you want to incorporate the yes, gauge exactly. in the wave function, okay. you just need yeah. to distinguish between in states and, and, and out states. Okay. Okay. 
Since we have this uh, model independent decomposition in terms of multiples, we look what is uh, the multiples we sent in this theory. These multiples are multiplied by coefficient, which give you the scale of the polar. These coefficients uh, are taken from what we have from the theory. So it's because as we wanted to see in general what you, which kind of picture you get. And then we took a uh, uh, future point in this case. We fixed them by uh, arbitrary years. So for future pointing, it's flowing out. Yes, uh, out, uh, out, yes, yes. So how do I? I don't know if. Uh, can we combine this with Matthias' statement that on average, final state interactions are attractive? Which they really looked like the first. Am I the steam state or out state wave function? What is this? Uh, is this the net transverse momentum including intrinsic or? Yes. Would you get a reverse sign if we go to? I don't know. Yeah, I also. also uh, uh, I, I mean, one thing yeah, exactly. I, 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 keep, I keep wondering about as soon as we include the gauge link, can we even, strictly speaking, maintain even a I mean, these are quarks viewed in a certain process, like in DIS process. So, this is part of it, this final state integration. So, what one can have some flow, so it's like some dynamical. This would tend the tendency for some part to move in some direction. To me, to stay. Maybe I'm asking the wrong question. I think. I think. When we write things like e dega p or stuff like that, if, if we put the Vincent line in, and you know, even for the Sivers effect or the light convection, there's, there's, there's a wait, price left. Like, factor then that it, it passes out under complex quantization. But we, we get a reverse sign from one process to another. Yeah, the maximum uh, effect of that. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. you can have to uh, uh, say in state wave function with in state complex conjugate wave function or out state wave function with out state complex conjugate wave function. Then, then you have to, yeah. the, the, the unitary matrix just turns into 
in dagger and it goes out. But then, then you have the, um, uh, you can take the in-state wave function, the out-state wave function, then you have, uh, um, um, since you have already con complex conjugated the unitary matrix. In the <coughs> So it's a little bit because uh, when uh, we, we are used to think of the team, I mean, but this one is uh, uh, we, you don't have this one in TMD yeah. right? because uh, uh, you would get uh, the square of, of the wave function, then the complex phase in the wave function just uh, cancel. When uh, but since you are not integrated over here, you have something which uh, where this phase of the wave function survives. Even if you have the product of the same wave function, because you have a <coughs> survival, and then this uh, phase by itself over depends on uh, interest, theta, you don't know. And, uh, and, and, uh, um, because if you think, uh, if, if you use the same reasoning uh, for the team, it would be maybe just maybe equal to. The, 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 the paradox is in following that. What you're presenting is, um, in some sense, a one-body operator evaluating between incoming wave function and outgoing wave function. So, so by definition, you have only um, configurations that are inside your wave function. But in a, in a DIS process, you can have, um, um, so you destroy the system, then, then um, and then you have final state the actions in that situation, you can go to configurations that are not in your original wave function and then you can have some genuine final state of the actions that are not not in your mm -hmm. uh, wave function. Then if you so why do you say you can't put them in the wave function? I mean if you if your wave functions are defined in a gauge where the link it plus infinity vanishes, then all the final state interactions in a DIS process yeah. should be included. Yeah, but then for a CDS process, you would need the proper wave function of the outgoing state, which is your, your identified hard one plus some, some rest. And that's no, not, but I think like, that's not by closure also. Or so in I the think at the, the level part. of such a calculation, you should put this basically for a gap. You want to do it kind yeah. of scientifically, but you have to do your defining with your probe. And then for this problem, you have to find an effective Hamiltonian, an effective light from Hamiltonian, which would be responsible for. For low energy modes in your system with above the conditions. Well, how to do it is another question. So, if you have this uh, effective Hamiltonian, uh, effective light from Hamiltonian, uh, with automatically built in boundary conditions, then your wave function will be you know, the correct wave function. The problem behavior is a plus infinity or minus infinity or some other condition. But if you, see, if you don't do it in this way, if you don't really you know, make a Hamiltonian and right, so you just you know, produce some wave functions, which are your model wave functions. And I think you have to just put this property by hand. Yeah, but in principle, it is inside. Wave functions, if they're defined, they will go forward. But then, in this, uh, when you are in the phase space, you have some correlation between. Uh, so you will get some complex space which depends on the transfer momentum. And then, when you uh, make the Fourier transform from the GTMD, for example, uh, from delta to, okay, delta is one in transitive to B curve, but you introduce some correlation between B and K curve in the wave function. Actually, B is coming from uh, the Newton state. So, because you, you take the Fourier transform of delta with respect to delta, which is the moment of transitive. Then you have a complex space which comes from the passive interaction which may depend on K, and then you have some correlation between this K and B curve which give you this flow, but uh, I, uh, so then uh, yeah, it's different from the picture that uh, you have, because uh, I mean, you, inter you have some additional correlation between big curve and big curve. And this so, correlation is given by the lens in front, so right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still also puzzled about the sign of the rods. No, no, but I, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think I asked a very stupid question. If you integrate over B, yeah. transverse plane, then it's all zero. this flow it's cancels zero. each other. Yeah. Yes. And nothing of this yeah. enters the TMD description. Not exactly. So, yeah. sorry for that. <laughs> so here I have another example. <laughs> so this is the case of unpolarized quark in longitudinal polarized proton. 
So in both cases, T even or T odd, you do not have any analog. In the case of the chip ET and TMD, that this is some unique information you can get from the GTMD. So in the naive time reversal, even. So you see now some dipole structure and the dipole are oriented in the perpendicular direction with respect to the curve. So then in this case, we have a radial flow. And then in particular, this uh, radial flow, it means that you have some orbital angular momentum. In this case, it's flowing in this direction, clockwise, anticlockwise. And it means that your orbital angular momentum is directed perpendicular to the plane, which is the same direction of the, of the polarization of the moon. So then in this case, you get some information about the orbital momentum of the, the correlation between the orbital momentum of the quark and the spin of the moon. In the naive time reversal lot, now you have some quadruple structure. So then there is no net quark flow because, uh, because of this quadruple structure. This is positive, this is negative, the average is zero. But in this case, you see this, uh, you have uh, the caper distribution is uh, tilted with respect to the B vector. Then going from the center, of the nucleon to the periphery, you observe some spiral flow of the quark. And since you have this uh, kind of quadruple structure, you have uh, the same quasi probability inward and outward. That's why you don't have net quark flow. So then you can make this kind of picture for all the possible polarization, and then you see how the kind of correlation the different kind of correlation of spin and orbital angular momentum. But uh, I don't make any other example, and I just discuss again this linear distribution because this one is related to this, uh, some, to this, uh, to the orbital angular momentum. And in particular, so here you have just the classical <laughs> expression for the orbital momentum, position cross k -perp. And then you have your orbital angular momentum operator, which is average the phase space with this big function for unpolarized port and to the polarized port. So if you go in the language of GTMD, you have this uh, some rule, which was also presented to you uh, this morning by Mark. So this uh, relation now involves uh, components of B and Kepirk, which are mutually orthogonal. Then you do not have a problem with the Eisenberg principle. You have bx, ky, and by, kx. So, and then also if you just uh, look at the density in the x, in the case of the longitudinal momentum, you can have for this object an uh, interpretation in terms of orbital angular momentum density, which, for example, you do not have to take the integral of the gs and the rule. So then, uh, so you can rewrite uh, this expression in this way by introducing the average transit momentum in the coordinate space. And then if you look, uh, for example, in this particular part model, then this kind of picture, positive or negative contribution to the orbital momentum, it depends on the model, it's model dependent. You have here in the coordinate space, bx and dy, the average transit <coughs> momentum for up and down quark. And then each arrow gives you, in each point in the coordinate space, the average trans momentum of the quark. In the case of a quark, you have always an uh, arrow in this direction, which means that you average over the, the full coordinate space, you have orbital angular momentum, which is in the same direction as the proton spin. In the case of the down quark, this is just a result of this model, depends on the model. You have always an uh, orbital flow, because uh, the, the k perp is always perpendicular to the perp, but in this case it's positive and then it becomes a negative at the periphery of the nuclear. Then average over the full coordinate space, in this case we have orbital <coughs> momentum, which is opposite to the proper spin. So, then uh, this one was calculated by taking the classic of zero and ignoring the Wilson line, but this uh, definition uh, of the orbital angular momentum can be big gauge invariant introducing the dependence on the Wilson line. And you have two different ways to do that. You can uh, introduce a Wilson line which connects the quark field along the straight line. And in this case, you get uh, 
the definition G for the orbital endowment, or you can use this step-like gauge link, and in this case, we recover the just manual definition. And these two definitions are uh, this uh, T even quantity, then it does not depend on if you have a Wilson line which, which is past or future quantity. So, so this one uh, we skip, this is just a calculation mm -hmm. by Michael in the angle and in the orbital in the lattice case. This is just a flash it because already this morning we discussed this. Actually, it's very nice because a few months ago we were always saying, no, we don't know how to measure this quantity. They probably they cannot be measured. Now there are different proposals how to measure them, particularly for the gluon GTMD at low X. have been proposed different, uh, different reaction, but uh, I will skip this one because we will be we discuss that. And then I can stop here. At some point, we wrote down that you said it's the most so it's a complete in general description of the GPD. GPD? Yes. GPD? Oh, GT and GPD. Yeah, so, uh, but you wrote it in terms of the uh, three four components. So, what is restricted for psi beta and x? For the beta region? I always take psi beta C. Uh, so I think, then, uh, oh, okay, because it looked like it was a function of psi or something. No, no, so psi equal to c. No, no, here I understand, but earlier, okay. much, much earlier. Um, no, later. Yes, yes. But if you go sorry, yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, so you had and then you found the most general description of this is maybe from the next slide. So ah, this is yeah, this one is for this the is This is function of x psi, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So do you have do you have no restriction on psi in this formula? Mm. Well, right for x larger than psi. This is for x larger than psi. So. Yeah, because we took always a three quark and three quark in initial and the same part number of particles in the initial and the states. If you want the R region, you have an overlap of light from the function with different number of particles. Which you have done as well. Uh, I did it uh, for the GPD, not for the GPD. And I will not do for the GPD. <laughs> Um, can, can you comment on the status of the renormalization of these objects? I mean, uh, if you can say start uh, from the original definition of second quantized products of second quantized fields, um, yeah. um, has the renormalization been, um, say, studied just close to the light pole or everywhere? Or, or uh, I mean, how? Um, um, it's a very general operator. So Presumably mixes with lots of operators, other operators under renormalization. How do mm -hmm. you control that? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't uh, study mm -hmm. that. Uh, as was, yeah. For the cheating bit, this was just. Uh, yeah. So, is the idea that this class of operators kind of renormalizes in itself um, uh, in some very generalized, general sense? or, or like what about higher body operators, for example? In, in, a, in a classic OPE, you have leading twists and higher twists in there. You we know, for example, that um, higher twist Eight operators four. mix with leading twists under renormalization. So what we studied was basically the renormalization of F one comma one. I think if you if you look look at other GT and GT and these like F comma four, that you will have other operator mixing, like for example, to yeah. To quark to one quark, yeah. yeah. Stuff like so, in, you're saying in, in, in general, uh, this operator under 
thing of scale we use with oh, operators okay. that have a different number that has a different number of, mm. uh, of fields. Mm. Possibly. No. But if it and since you explain your fox space decomposition changing the color just means you, you allow for what was originally a core to mm. I mean the rocks and the ones and I the think the renormalization is just uh, for GTMDs is really nothing different than what we have for TMDs. Mm -hmm. At least for Xi you could see the location of concentration. And the renormalization is local in B per, so having resolution in B per does not add any complication. I mean, you have been very careful and always emphasize that we have only quasi distributions. Mm -hmm. And that in general, this quantities can become mega. Yeah, in our model calculations, they never become mega. So, um, I mean, which is a good thing. <laughs> now, if, if, we, if we talk about the nuclear one, um, at, at, which le at which level uh, could this become relevant? I mean, Bushy uh, Tucker then did mm -hmm. some, some toy model and they see actually that it becomes negative. Um, put differently, if I look at the nucleon, over which distances in B per and over which distances, quote unquote, in K per do I have to average to avoid? Negative numbers. Well, you just made a reasonable solution within the linear mass and I think the so it's called the H curve. So then you can get it. So it's, it's small enough such that for the nucleon it still makes sense. Well, you have yeah. principle. <laughs> yeah. So you can so, smear a linear distribution within this cell. Right. That then you get positive. So, but no, no, I, I, I see that. So, but then, so he, he introduces a little scenic situation, right? Which is uh, what is uh, your average of the uh, volume in the free space of uh, the cycle of each part with some Gaussian. But the problem in that case that you don't recover the GPT and the minimum. So the volume is small enough such that this energy for the nuclear is good as meaningful. Meaning I can yes. put plenty of volumes in the nuclear. Yes. Well, the volume in KT and volume in BT are impossible. Yeah. Correct. Otherwise, it's, it's okay. So yeah. Why is it bad to have negative numbers? These are not probabilities. So it's yeah. positive or negative. Yeah. But I mean, the, the, the nice pictures which which Parker has shown and this outward flow and radial flow and polar flow, they are basically based on, on assuming this is like a probability density. No, no. And, and, and it's yeah, nice. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to take away anything. But once you assume that you know, it's like, so, 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 yeah, what when I so what I show you, it was something becoming negative because I just, uh, for example, show this one. But, but the volume you can also become negative. No, you it does not become negative in the model. So in, in the model. In, in, in the model. In, in, the model. In, but I uh, that. Yeah, but yeah. since yeah. we always found that <coughs> for some particular uh, spin configuration, when you add a contribution, it was always positive. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, but there's, there's nothing in general which it's not bad, but then still these nice pictures go away. Yeah. No, but yeah. you can speak it's about the tendency, quasi probability, quasi probability within the volume of No, I want to maintain them, but I just want to, to yeah. see, to better understand where do we have to be careful. Yeah. What, what is the limitation? Well, I remember it is coming from a very simple three quark wave function. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Mm -hmm. But 
like to ask a somewhat like a social question. Um, who else in physics uses Wigner functions? I'm right. asking for the following reason because when, when, when Zhang Dong and collaborators introduced this concept, they it sounded like well, um, this is what we need in order to communicate with our colleagues in condensed matter physics, etc. And but um, from my experience, uh, when I talk to people and I, I, I mention uh, Wigner function, they're like. The what? <laughs> no, no, no. It, there is I, I, um, I went through textbooks and I have lots of textbooks at home. The only thing I could find was some like collective nuclear excitations. Yeah. And in quantum optics, um, they are using a lot. Yeah, we, have, I, um, we have a group in it? Pavia. If you look at it, is it really? Yeah. If you look at the bigger paper, which is in 1932, I think. And it fits where they have like 5,000 references. So. I haven't looked at those references. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they even measure yeah. in quantum yeah. optics, <laughs> and there is a colleague of mine in okay. who, who, who worked on it, uh, and we tried to we wanted to to learn how to measure now for the neutron, and we discussed a lot about just to make to have a common language because this could uh, okay. and we, depending on the field everyone is speaking with their is their own language, but we we didn't come up uh, to nothing, but actually. So they are measuring it in quantum optics. So they are using this uh, creation relation operator, different these coherent states. Then we have to find a translation in our language. Uh, and do they use it in, a, in the sense of a real like working concept? Or are there different calculations at the level of this function? Or, or just as some, like, uh, in the sense that we have some wave function, let's just present, which is really the fundamental object, let's just present no, no, it in no, that no. way. Yeah, okay. There was also a support in the end of course. It's used in quantum optics. Yeah. Because okay. mm -hmm. that's, that's where you push in the resolution mm -hmm. in space, mm -hmm. controlled by the wavelengths of objects. Mm -hmm. so. it was, mm -hmm. And if I rem remember correctly, they have the same problems with defining what is angular momentum. Yeah. To pin that down. Yeah. <laughs> Just that they can make experiments. So, so somewhat related to this discussion of communicate to people from other fields, what I find very interesting with this GPMDs and Victor functions is that the first time we can really talk about spin orbit correlations. The, the TMD community has been doing this for more than 10 years for the same reason. To, to somehow communicate with the outside. But all that we have for the PMDs is a transverse momentum of a parton which can get correlated either to the spin of the parton or the spin of the nuclear. Here, for the first time, we have real spin orbit correlation, so a coupling of a spin to an orbital angle. And I, I think this is, this is pretty nice. So, so the, the GTMPs or Wigner functions are not just mother functions, so they contain all the information of TMDs and, and GPDs, but they, as Barbara nicely emphasized, contain a lot of new information, which other, otherwise is not accessible. And the fact that this F14 integrated over K-Prep just gives the angular momentum, and we can also get this from GPDs, this is just an integral information. But here you can now look at this object differentially. So you can look at the spin orbit correlation differentially in the k and the p I, I'm not so sure that you can go away from the valence group up from two. This is the point. And we know that for our scale, if we are interested in, the proton does not consist of three quarters. But it's not your interest for the orbital and the momentum to be already put if you have something to control. This is our definition of all the yeah. yeah. moment of yeah. the yeah. It applies in general. Exactly. Yeah, but I mean, think how many wave functions do you have for five particle force? Now you no, don't no, have I mean, to that's calculate with yeah, this function. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to calculate with this function. So what happens to this table and to all the pictures if one goes away from the side equals you? Uh, 
Like oh, we already gave up probabilistic description. We have quasi probabilities, and it's still instructive to look at. <coughs> so psi not equal zero means we really have some amplitude. Mm -hmm. uh, we still keep all these nice correlations, and it's closer to experiment because an experiment psi is not zero. So is there some some idea to go to generalize generalized Wigner functions? I don't know. Okay, this it was uh, it was the sixth we have six dimensional object then no? yes. yes and uh, you take uh, it's, it's exactly like the fourth factor you get the three dimensional Fourier transform or two dimensional Fourier transform so then uh, you can do that but then what do you learn uh, learn what is the teacher <laughs> <laughs> And also, when you are okay, psi equal to zero, I mean, this relation is in Chicago, so this is just a, you get the, you take the operator definition of the orbital angular momentum, and then you find exactly the relation with the linear distribution. With the operator, you change the psi equal to zero to the distribution. Take psi equal to zero. So you don't have orbital angular momentum, for example, in this game, you don't have orbital angular momentum. So yeah, for, the GPD, yes. for the GPD, you have to Yeah, you recover in the limit of psi going yeah. to zero, but what do you have with psi is not zero? You have something I don't know. much more general and more yeah. powerful. And what, I don't know what it means. Similar to the question, I mean, you can ask the same question for the GPDs. So let's say GPD is depending on psi for non zero psi and as function of P per. So in the case, this, yeah. but you don't have a probabilistic interpretation. So, but then for the G, some rule, this one is for any psi because of lower is in line. So, here, it's also yeah. 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 The definition itself, uh, uh, yeah, exactly. And, the and then you get uh, the uh, decan, uh, the decan, 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 the Depends on what the audience wants. You need a quantum break now. Um, what's, what's, the, what's the sentiment? Yeah. I think I, I would rather have a talk now than the yes. second spot today. And then uh, take a longer break before the end. Okay, how do I plug? Do I have to put my, my talk on this or can I just use it for my. Uh,